you all for giving up your Saturday morning yet again to come to these. And thanks to the League of Women Voters for hosting these for so long. I was thinking that I came and listened to these when Senator Tro was serving in the Senate. So this is certainly a long-standing tradition in our community, and I think a very, a very good one. Uh, as you all know, we are going to start our session in earnest this coming Monday, and we have some new ways for you to be engaged in the process. I put a website up there uh, for OLIS, which is the Oregon Legislative Information System. You will now be able to go onto this, look at every bill, you'll be able to see online the amendments, and an hour before every hearing, you will even be able to see the exhibits that are submitted to the committee um, by individuals that are coming to offer testimony if they've offered that ahead of time. You will even be able to get the floor letters that people put on our desks on the day that we vote on bills. So you'll be able to see all of those. You'll be able to look up all of the bills that are introduced by a particular member. And you'll be able to see all of the bills that are sitting in a particular committee. Signal technology in our schools. We have some school districts that have been able to close the achievement gap, and I actually prefer to talk about that as an opportunity gap. When we have kids who aren't achieving, it's not because they're not smart, it's because we have not figured out how to give them the services and supports that they need to excel. And in many districts like Canby, through the use of one-to-one -one devices like iPads and iPods, uh, kids are doing better. And we're looking at it from the frame of what is good for cities, it is a really good bill that will help cities with a problem that they have with compression. Cities have lost $20 million last year due to compression when levees have stacked up on each other. School districts are also impacted by compression, but the reasons that they are impacted by compression are different, so they don't have the same solution. And school districts are impacted even more than cities or counties are. And 11-12, school districts across the state lost $74.5 million just in the 11-12 fiscal year. $74.5 million to compression. In the 12-13 fiscal year, that had grown to $97.2 million. If you think about that on a biennial basis, that is $180 million that is not going to our local public schools. Now cities and counties, when they go into compression, it's because of levies. School districts are already in compression on the base rate that, that you pay. So of that uh, 97.2 million, over a third of that is in the base rate. The League of Oregon Cities proposal will not pull any of that out of compression. The only thing that the League of Oregon Cities proposal would do on the voter control measure would allow a, a city to ask, or any local government, special district, school district, county, to ask their voters to allow them to have a levy that's outside of compression. There are only 18 school districts in the state of Oregon. 9% of all of our school districts that have levies. Those are the only school districts that that would, that that would help.